Welcome to this Miles by Foot tour of Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport, code CVG. While CVG is the primary airport serving Cincinnati, Ohio, its location makes it unique. It's arguably the busiest airport in the U.S. that serves a city in another state. As its airport code suggests, CVG is located near the city of Covington on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River, about 15 minutes by car southwest of Cincinnati's city center. This makes it the busiest airport in Kentucky by quite a bit, with roughly twice the passenger traffic as my home airport, SDF, in Louisville. And it's the 50th busiest in the country. On a broad scale, CVG's role in both the local and national community has changed a lot since its opening, and even in recent history, but it still stands as both an essential passenger hub in the national network, as well as a critical economic asset for communities on both sides of the river. It's also a powerful diplomat for the spirit and history of the city it represents, and its new life is exciting for traveler and local alike. Let's explore! Historically, CVG was a hub, focus city, and crew base for Delta Airlines, but today it offers flights on 11 different airlines in total, flying to 46 year-round destinations across the United States, as well as to Canada and Europe, along with additional airlines and destinations seasonally. Delta still has the most flights and passengers of any airline, comprising about a third of the airport's weekly flights, even after losing hub status more than a decade ago. More flights go to Atlanta on any airline each week than anywhere else from CVG, averaging between 7 and 8 daily flights. In total, Delta services 20-year-round destinations, including several legacy services. Most notably, Delta has restarted their flagship non-stop service to Paris Charles de Gaulle three times a week. While the hub may be gone, demand for the routes and customer loyalty remain strong here. American makes up about a quarter of the airport's traffic, offering a robust 12 destinations, including 9 out of their 10 hubs, as well as 2 daily services to Boston, and 1 each to Austin and Raleigh-Durham. United offers hub-only service to 5 different airports, with flights to Newark and O'Hare being the most frequent around 5 times daily. Alaska Airlines flies to Seattle once a day, a route that Delta flies just as often, and Air Canada connects Cincinnati with Toronto twice a day. Speaking of international service, British Airways' daily service to London Heathrow resumed this year, making CVG the closest airport within a four-hour drive to offer this route. Of the low-cost airlines, Frontier has the strongest presence at CVG, with 11 year-round destinations, including multiple daily flights to their operating bases at Denver, Atlanta, Orlando, and Tampa. But they offer at least one weekly flight to these airports. Spoiler alert, that's how I'm leaving CVG today, so one of these destinations will be our next airport tour. Allegiant offers an impressive 19 weekly destinations. Most of their flights head south to their main Florida bases, including Destin, Fort Lauderdale, Sarasota, Orlando Sanford, Punta Gorda, and Clearwater, each served several times a week. Southwest, the legacy low-cost airline, serves connection-focused hubs Baltimore and Chicago Midway, but they also connect to Denver and Orlando. Newcomer Breeze Airways has two destinations, Charleston, South Carolina, and San Francisco, available three times a week with several seasonal destinations with direct service. Sun Country, although it's only seasonal, offers service between its hub and Minneapolis at different times throughout the year. CVG's Landside Terminal has two above ground levels and one underground level, with flight check-in on the top floor. Delta, British Airways, Breeze, and Alaska check-ins are to the left, with all other airlines found to the right. The main atrium contains a newsstand and gift shop on the top floor, and a postal center and TSA pre-check office one level down. Once you've checked in and you've cleared security on the top floor, you'll descend below ground and take CVG's People Mover to their two concourses on the airfield, with a walkway available too in case the People Mover is out of service or you just prefer to walk. Concourse A is the first stop, and it serves most airlines at the airport, with Concourse B serving Delta, British Airways, Breeze, and American. Each of the two concourses is self-sufficient, with food, shopping, and guest services in the concourse's center and along its length. Concourse A has 23 gates, serving Southwest, United, Alaska, Frontier, Allegiant, Air Canada, and Sun Country, with one main departure hall, as well as two low-numbered gates directly off the concourse's center. Along the departure hall, you'll find more restaurants as well as two lounges, one of the airport's USO lounges and the club at CPG. The club is open to Priority Pass membership holders or you can purchase entry at the door. The USO lounge is open to active and retired service members and family members with them. 
On your way to gate A4, you'll find a kids' play area as well, designed to be isolated from the noise if you need a place for them to run around for a bit or relax. Concourse B has 28 gates, most of which serve Delta. The concourse has two departure halls, one in each direction. Most of its food and shopping are in the concourse's center, along with CVG's Delta Sky Club, found straight ahead and to the left as you come up from the People Mover, next to gate B14. Farther down, you'll find the airport's second USO lounge and an escape lounge with both pre-reserved and at-the-door options for entry, as well as the airport's interfaith chapel and prayer room. On average, Delta flights at CVG use larger planes at larger gates, so this concourse is significantly larger and more spacious than A, about a third of a mile long from end to end. Along its length, you'll find several prehistoric skeletons for you and your kids to check out, as well as a timeline of the airport's history towards the far end of the longer, eastern hall. After arriving at CVG in either terminal, you'll take the People Mover back to the landside terminal. If CVG is your port of entry into the U.S., be aware that you'll clear customs, then pass through security again before re-emerging airside, even if Cincinnati is your final destination. There's no way to get from customs to landside without going through the secure part of the airport again. As you leave the People Mover, keep left to reach the welcome point for family, friends, and colleagues to meet you. Take the right escalator to go to CVG's four baggage claims and ground transportation. Check the screens at the top of the escalator to find the claim for your arriving flight. Baggage offices are off to the side for each airline near their designated claim. CVG's ground transportation is divided into two areas. At the top of the escalator, you'll go right to access Ground Transport East, which serves ride shares, traditional taxis, charter buses, and local transit buses. Northern Kentucky has its own transit system that integrates with Cincinnati's Metro buses on the Ohio side. While subject to change, of course, as of October 2023 at least, the 2X Express takes you to and from CVG and downtown Cincinnati at 30 minute intervals about 20 hours a day, seven days a week, starting before sunrise and ending after midnight. The ride takes about 40 minutes and costs $1.50 for a one-way trip. Private passenger pickup and garage parking is straight ahead onto the street from the escalator outside each baggage claim. To the left at the top of the escalator to baggage claim, you'll find two more claims and Ground Transport West, which contains rental car counters and an outdoor shuttle area for all parking lots. The rental cars themselves are conveniently located just outside in the adjacent garage. No shuttle needed. If you need a shuttle for parking or hotels, step outside behind the rental counters. CBG has two shuttle parking options, and both shuttles arrive in the first lane as you walk out. If you're using a third-party parking arrangement that offers a shuttle, they're in the second lane, and hotels that offer shuttles will pick you up in the far lane, including CBG's on-site three-star Doubletree Hotel, located next to the premium parking garage. Plane spotting at CVG is great for two reasons, the variety and size of planes and the support the airport provides to see them. On the eastern side of the airfield, CVG maintains a public plane spotting area, complete with maps and information to help you identify the planes that pass through CVG. And it's not just passenger planes either. CVG has spent the last couple decades transitioning from a passenger hub for Delta into a central hub for cargo service. CVG is a primary hub for DHL, there are yellow and red brandings everywhere, and Amazon Air. Planes from all over the world make stops at CVG, and at all hours, meaning there's never a bad time to visit. The spotting area is aligned with one of the longer north-south runways at CVG, so no matter the wind, you're likely to get some great pictures or some of this high-quality cinematic video. When airside, you can do some great spotting in the center of Concourse B in the food court, especially if the east-west runway is in use that day. Cincinnati's history as an industrial and technological hub manifests in art and exhibits found throughout the airport. Of note are the large mosaics you'll see in the landside terminal and TSA screening areas, all created by German-American Art Deco artist Vinold Rice painstakingly crafted from shards of colored glass depicting different contemporary industries in the 1930s. It might just be my preference for Art Deco as a style, but their presence at CVG is a reminder of the importance of workers and their industries to the city's success, 
and I'm glad they're here. Visiting CVG is to visit Cincinnati in miniature. As a lifelong resident of Louisville down the Ohio River, I've always seen Cincinnati as a sister city to my own, and it's even harder to deny that connection when there are airports in Kentucky already. Whether you're coming here to plain spot or begin an exciting adventure of your own, CBG has successfully transitioned from an airport dominated by one airline to a multi-purpose hub of travel and industry for the region's passengers, the country's business leaders, and the world's cargo. No matter where the future leads, CBG's happy to take you there. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to Miles by Foot. I'll be publishing a full, unnarrated walk of CVG if you're interested in experiencing the airport firsthand. Then we'll be heading off to one of the most ambitious destinations you can imagine. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell to reserve your seat next to me on this newest journey around the country. Thanks again for watching, and keep moving forward.